What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to another short video looking at some basic to intermediate configuration and usage of Canon's EOS R5 camera. In this video, I'm going to talk about the subject to detect setting. This is found on the AF1 menu, it's the third option from the top, and it basically configures how the camera automatically prioritizes and selects subject matter when you're using the face plus tracking zone or large zone autofocus modes. So if all you ever use is spot point, etc., none of this really applies to you. There are three options for this mode. There are people, animals, and no priority. And broadly speaking, Canon could have done a much better job explaining all of this and documenting all of this. And quite honestly, I've done a lot of testing and a lot of sort of messing around trying to understand what's going on, and I'm not even 100% sure I understand what these settings are doing. So I'm going to do my best to try to explain what this does and what I've seen from my experience and what the manual and uh, documentation says, but... One big caveat to all of this is this is all part of that machine learning based autofocus system. There's a number of tiers and fallbacks that happen going all the way back to essentially the algorithms that Canon used in, you know, DSLRs 10, 15 years ago. And your results for any given operation or for any given scene may vary based on just essentially the ginormous amount of uh, range that is the input of pointing a camera at the world. So bear that in mind. So there are three options and essentially these options sort of control priority, but they also control sort of exclusionary things and just behavior in general. So the first option is people. And according to the manual, people, quote, prioritizes the face or heads of people as the main subject to track. When a person's face or head cannot be detected, the camera may track all or part of their body. Pretty straightforward. In my experience, that's all it does, is if you have your camera set to people, it will focus on people, even though the autofocus system is capable of detecting, recognizing, and focusing on animals. Uh, obviously, if it can't find people in a scene, I guess this is an important thing to point out, if it can't find people in the scene, it falls back to that old school closest subject um, under the say hint box or largest in the frame autofocus point selection that mechanism that's been in canon cameras for ages option number two is animals and the manual for the camera for the r5 says quote detects animals dogs cats or birds and people and prioritizes the detection results for animals as the main subject to track for animals, the camera attempts to detect faces or bodies, and if the A and the AF points are shown over any faces detected, when an animal's face or entire body cannot be detected, the camera may track part of their body. So in my experience, what this basically translates to is if you have people and animals in a scene, the camera will focus or will detect both, and it will initially select the animal as the thing to focus on and then you can move using the multi-controller the autofocus point from the animal's face or eye or body to a person's face or eye or body etc the final option is no priority and according to the manual this quote the camera determines the main subject automatically from the subject information detected now unfortunately this is where things kind of become a mess. I have no idea what that means. It doesn't really tell us an awful lot about the exact behavior. Is it still detecting animals, people? What's going on? In my testing, 
I have found no priority tends to be far more inconsistent than people or animals. Um, I think what it's doing in some respects is starting with the old school kind of closest subject or largest subject first autofocus algorithm. And then as the camera runs and it processes the scene, if it detects a person or an animal, then maybe it will jump to that. So what I've seen, um, broadly speaking, is in people mode, the camera will put a box around people's heads, uh, either the corners and say one shot indicate this is where it will focus. And then if there's multiple people or multiple subjects, there'll be little arrows next to it that you can use the multi-controller to move from subject to subject. If you're in servo, it just draws a box around the, the face, again, adds the arrows, and then as you track things, it continues to follow the subject through the scene. In animal mode, it does that for both people and animals, but it will initially select the animal's head or body, etc., before it selects people's heads, bodies, etc. But if it selects an animal and there's a person next to the animal, a person's face next to the animal, you can use the multi-controller to select the person's face. Uh, the difference, obviously, here in my experience between people and animals is that in people mode, you can't use the multi-controller to select an animal's face, but in animals, you can jump to a person's face. In no priority, what I find generally happens is at first doesn't detect anything at all. And I know this because in the way the EOS R presents autofocus behavior, a detected subject such as people or animals will tend to have a single box drawn in the viewfinder or on the screen around that subject. And that will be how it indicates that this is what it's actually actively tracking. When that's not the case, it draws lots of little AF point boxes over the area that's in focus. And so what I found generally with no priority is sometimes it will fall or it will detect a person or an animal's face. And then you will get that box, that single box surrounding the area that it's focusing on. But in most cases, it actually starts out with the big grid of autofocus point area or autofocus points showing what it's focusing on. And then over time, as the autofocus algorithm continues to run or something to that effect, it eventually will potentially, doesn't seem to always do it, but potentially detect a person or an animal. So what should you use? Well, obviously, if you shoot people and you don't photograph animals, leave it on people. It's the safest option for people. And if you happen to shoot a landscape or an architectural shot or something like that without people in it, the, the subject or the, the automatic, the area tracking methods or the area AF methods will just fall back to picking the closest thing or the subject, to you know, um, suggested thing. So... It just falls back to the old school kind of autofocus point selection. If you're a wildlife photographer or you do animal photography, you can pretty much leave it on animals. Um, in my experience, basically animals will do what it, in, what it says tracking animals. And if you then say, you know, are coming back to the hotel or the lodge or whatever with your family, cause you know, you're on vacation or something like that. And you want to do some uh, snapshots around the hotel with your family. If the camera's still in animals, it will detect their faces, lock onto their faces or eyes and give you that kind of the behavior you would kind of expect as long as there aren't any animals in the frame. And if there are animals in the frame, you can always just select the people by using the multi-controller to move to the next subject. No priority. Honestly, I haven't found a compelling reason to use it yet. The, in theory, it means that it maybe won't have a priority or it will run to automatically to the original autofocus algorithm, but in my experience, it either takes longer to detect people and animals if you're not already in those modes, or it just defaults back to the kind of old school, not really targeted 
auto-focused uh, area detection algorithm. So I know this wasn't as concrete as some of these previous videos or some of my other videos on this stuff. Unfortunately, that's just the case where complicated technology gets put out by a camera company and autofocus technology is extremely complicated, especially when you start talking about machine learning without a substantial or significant amount of documentation or explanation on what exactly is going on internally. So if you found this at least slightly useful, hopefully, please consider smashing that like button. Again, consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.